Welcome back to the numbers game and this time we're on to the experiment side of the show. So this is where we talk about all of the things, the practical hints and tips, the real work that we're doing to try and grow our own audience and trying to help you guys come along with us and actually do the experiments as well. So first we're talking progress, what we're working on right now and then actions that we can get you to take uh, to try and grow your own audience as well. So let's get back to last week's uh, challenge, I guess. Last week I introduced the whole idea about the lead magnet. Mm -hmm. So it was the fact that right now one of our big challenges is getting more people to opt in to our email list because we have, um, what, a couple of thousand people a day on the website, but not that many people are actually opting in. Um, We're building on in the olden days. So from last year, our general lead magnet uh, so how to podcast ebook used to get us about five to ten people per day signing up. And that was when the traffic was maybe in the 500 to 1,000 a day mark. So from 500 to 1,000 people, let's say 750, on average, we're getting, say, seven and a half people. <laughs> so five to ten. Uh, so what's that? One percent conversion rate? 75, 750. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's not. It's point, uh, no, it's point zero. No, it is 50. Yes. Point one. I was, Matt. You'd imagine that I would know a bit more. Yeah, <laughs> did physics at university. Uh, anyway, so yeah, 1%. So it's a pretty low um, opt in. It's not entirely. Um, yeah, so we actually found with a bit of experimentation we could get that opt in up. So in the end, in the olden days, I was getting the opt in, experimenting around different headlines, different formats. We managed to get the old ebook opt in up to 2.2%. So a 2.2% conversion. Um, on all of our traffic and that was off about 12,000 pop-ups that last experiment Um, so the idea that I talked about the last time around is to start making things more specific so to start making email opt-ins or lead magnets I should say that are specific to either a post or a category or a section of the site it's unfeasible for most of us to make a lead magnet for every single post but it's much more feasible to create one that's relevant to a category which you'd hope would make the conversion a bit better. So, yeah, what, what are the ones we've created recently then, Matthew? So we've got the, uh, well, I've been working on the ultimate kit bag yeah, one yeah, for yeah. Um, our equipment articles. So oh. basically put together a document of uh, my favourite equipment that I've used over the years, yeah. stuff that I'll never do without. <laughs> but then uh, brought in as well the sort of equipment that if money was no object we would add to the inventory as well yeah, so um, your dream bag some of the some of the really <laughs> high-end stuff that we definitely can't afford at this moment in yeah. time but um <laughs> i think i think you know people will be interested to read that because if you're at all interested in recording audio at any sort of level you you always want to know like yeah. what are people using what mics are they using what they're running it into Aye. what cables are they using what yeah. headphones so it's just um yeah, it's a, a big long list of kit and why I like it or why I'd like to own it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's uh, it's the kind of thing we we try and keep stuff realistic on the site, don't we? Because we don't want to we don't want people to be put off starting a podcast or running a podcast because mm. they overcomplicate things or it costs too much. But we all like to look at the expensive shiny kit, don't we? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, a, a couple of weeks ago, I did an article called uh, how much do i need to spend on podcast equipment yeah and my answer like my answer to everything is buy a samsung q2u because yeah. you get a set of headphones a wee stand and a microphone yeah. and that's yeah. 60 dollars and that will do but Aye. you know if you uh, have been doing it for a couple of years and you're looking at getting a high-end setup then uh, there's there's a lot of good stuff in there as well yeah uh, yeah i mean <laughs> you're always um lusting over some bits of kit at, at some point or another i mean at the moment there's a couple of microphones i'd love to try out i don't know ne- the thing is i don't necessarily think they'd improve anything in fact they wouldn't improve the show they'd improve the sound maybe incrementally but nobody normal would notice so it's just like it's just uh it's a coveting thing isn't it so you want more shiny stuff so yeah anyway it's something that we thought we'd be interested to read if somebody we knew that was really into their audio published that what's in their ultimate kit bag we'd read it so that's the idea you create a lead magnet like that that is interesting to your audience that is relevant to a section of the site for us that's the equipment section of the site so the most popular category on the whole site is podcast equipment so we've created a lead magnet that's much more tailored to that so we're hoping we can get a better opt-in rate on that one and that's one i'm going to make live this week um to report back and last week I mentioned the fact we created a Skype one as well didn't we that was you created that one didn't you yeah we've had uh, 
we designed this document quite a while ago and yeah, it was yeah. originally for our clients that we were working with. It was yeah. just part of the service we offered was we gave them a lot of resources that we'd made. And this is a wee uh, document that's designed to not only like get you savvy with you know, the, the, the etiquette around Skype, yeah, um, the yeah. shutting off all the unnecessary stuff on your computers, yeah. the way you, you know, um, keep people out of the room, just basic stuff yeah. like that, but it's a yeah. checklist. Aye. Um, and it's it, the, the idea behind this is that someone can email it in advance of an interview to mm. a guest who might not be so familiar with doing a recorded Skype interview. Yeah. And it's just, like I say, it's a checklist. So it's a, it's a very handy wee yeah. sheet. It's the basics for us, and probably for most people listening to this, it's nothing you won't know, but it's having a, a handy... So we're giving it away as a handy little resource that you can send to guests, because like you say, yeah, a lot of them don't know these basics, and it can really improve your interview if you just prep people a little bit. So I added that to every page on the site that includes the word Skype in the URL. And I can do that through our uh, bit of email software, which is uh, Sumo Me. I'm going to talk about a bit more about that on the next episode, actually, because that'll be the next action, I think, is installing that. But let's not jump ahead. Suffice to say that the email software that we are using lets you show particular pop-ups on particular pages with all sorts of different rules. So it could be a category, it could be a tag, it could be just a word in a URL. So I've put it to be any article that contains the word Skype in a URL because I know that every every article we write that relates to Skype uh, will have the Skype in a URL because that'll be one of the keywords or part of the key phrase that we're trying to target. So <laughs> let's go to the results on that one. The, the results, to be frank, are not the best. <laughs> They're at 0.5% conversion so far out of 6,000 pop-ups, which isn't brilliant. Uh, it might be that my headline is just a bit shit, to be honest, uh, but I've tried it on two different ones and both of them haven't been great. So it'll take a bit more experiment and I'm going to try a few different pop-ups, a few more variations, a few different ways of delivering it. But it's a funny one that because I thought that would do really well. Um, but anyway, I won't I won't write it off yet because you it's only been a week. It's only been a small amount of pop ups. So um, I'll report back on that over a month. I'm going to run this for a month and we're going to add the kit bag into the experiment this week as well. So I'll be able to report back on that next week, see what the conversion is on that. You can't base a rule off just one experiment. It needs to be repeated. It needs to be done a few times at least before you can create a rule off it. So. Uh, while the results haven't been great so far, I can't write it off yet. Purely anecdotal at this point. Yes, indeed. <laughs> um, and actually, do you know what? Uh, the the results have been a little bit better on some pages. So I'm getting 1.8% um, conversion off one or two pages on their own. Um, so it might be that actually it's just much more relevant to a couple of the pages within the uh, the Skype ecosystem of on our website. So I'll report back in the next couple of weeks and see how that's getting on. That takes us to the action for this week. So what we want you guys to do, what you can do out there to follow along with our experiments, to try and grow your own audience, try and create a new fan this week or today even. Now we're talking about lead magnets. I, last week I said create a lead magnet. So last week, Matthew, you weren't here, I can tell you. No. I, I told people to, uh, the next blog post they write, to actually just try and create a lead magnet from it. So spend an extra half hour creating a checklist or a resource or something really simple, just like an A4 page, something very simple that relates to that, that gives them a wee bit extra value. Um, so if it's in a how-to post, maybe even record like a two-minute video showing how to as well as writing about it or a checklist that takes them through the steps of it. So I hope you have done that for this week because the job now is to turn it into a pop-up. So get a bit of software to do this. The one that I use is called Sumo Me. Uh, so this is by uh, company AppSumo run by Noah Kagan. Uh, so on just sumo.com and it's a great wee tool and even better, they've made it free for small sites at the moment. So you can set up Sumo Me, go to sumo.com, set it up uh, on your website and you can set up using the list builder part of the tool, you can set up a pop-up. Uh, and what you do is you go in there, you put the pop-up in there, um, you create yourself a headline, a bit of text, maybe an image to go along with it. And then you do a show rule. So there's a display rule and you can say show on only this page. And all you do is paste in the URL for that page and it shows on only that page. So that blog post that you've just written, uh, 
You can take that extra resource, that extra checklist that you've created, and you can put it into just that page. So it's only shown on the one that's relevant. Now, I would say actually, if you have no other pop-ups in the site, it might be that it's worthwhile putting it across the site anyway and seeing how it works everywhere. But that's the job for this week, is to go out there, get Sumo Me, and install it on your site and set up at least one pop-up. In fact, no, set up two. Let's do an EB test. Do do two and we'll do headlines. We'll compare some headlines. So create two quite different headlines and we can start to experiment because that's the whole point of experimenting. So if we put one, we won't really see what's better. But if you create two with two quite different headlines, then that means that you can see which variation is more effective and you can start to refine it from there. Um, the key here is to make the headlines very different. <laughs> so don't just this change one, one word. This one simple trick for reducing belly fat. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Never seen a pop up with that on it before. <laughs> Seven tips to reducing your belly size. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it, I it, it make up two quite different ones. And if you want to use some of those kind of BuzzFeedy style headlines to see if they work, then go for it. You might find they don't. You might find a more natural, honest one works a bit better. So that's the point of an A/B test, though. You can experiment and find out which one works more effectively okay and i'm going to talk about um this software we're pulling this into next week so right now sumo me is only going to be capturing those emails but it's not going to be putting it into an email uh capture an email bit of software a sort of an email manager um, and i'll talk about that next week the ones that we use so that's the experiment. I hope you do follow along. I hope, I'd love to start featuring people on the show in future. That's the intention. Within a few weeks, we're going to start getting people involved in future experiments, report back on their results as well. So if you are following along, if you do do this, then do get in touch. If you're watching the video, put a comment in below on YouTube. If you're listening to the podcast, get in touch either via Twitter, the podcast host, or email me at uh, info, email us at info at thepodcasthost.com and let us know how you're getting on and we'll try and feature your stuff on it too.